Ishin is a peaceful suburb, and within that peaceful suburb is a peaceful block of flats, St. Leonard's Court. But some 80 years ago, the atmosphere in this tranquil corner was much more menacing. Hitler had begun to threaten Austria and Czechoslovakia, and London was filled with apprehension. Trenches and shelters were dug throughout the capital, and in St. Leonard's Court, which was completed in 1938, the builders installed an air raid shelter for the residents. The Prime Minister, Neville Chamberlain, famously thought that he defused the crisis by flying to Germany and negotiating with Hitler. I had another talk with the German Chancellor, Herr Hitler. When he returned, clutching his famous letter, he was hailed as a hero, but almost immediately Hitler invaded Czechoslovakia. Once again, the rattle of a German army on the march echoes in Europe. The shelter began to seem like a very good idea indeed when a sombre Neville Chamberlain went on air to broadcast to the nation. I am speaking to you from the cabinet room at 10 Downing Street. One of the people who heard that speech was Leslie Hammond, who was living in St. Leonard's Court at the time and has been there ever since. It was on around about either 12 or 1 o'clock on a Sunday when the Prime Minister came on air. This morning, the British ambassador in Berlin handed the German government a final note stating that unless we heard from them by 11 o'clock that they were prepared at once to withdraw their troops from Poland, a state of war would exist between us. I have to tell you now that no such undertaking has been received and that consequently this country is at war with Germany. And presumably the mood at the end of that, with your mum and dad and yourself, it must have been a pretty sombre moment. Oh yes it was, really. Yeah. Yes it was. Do you remember talking about it afterwards or were you just silent? Uh, we, we were, I think we had a glass of beer and uh, just standing by, as you know, the, just the loudspeaker. Um, and, uh, and just wonder what was going to happen from there. Many children were immediately evacuated, and some of the adults at St Leonard's Court also left London. But Leslie stayed on because he was in a reserved occupation. He'd been working as a sound engineer for Gainsborough Films, and was kept on to help train people to do the sound for the Crown Film Unit, that was making propaganda films for the Ministry of Information. When the Blitz proper began in 1940, the shelter was soon proving its worth on a nightly basis. How, how did you know that there was a there was a raid coming on. Oh, well, the siren would go off. And how long did you, that give you to get down into the shelter or whatever? How, how much warning was there after the siren went oh, off? Oh, probably a, a good half hour or something like that, a quarter of an hour. Right, yeah. It gave you time to get down to the shelter. When the siren sounded, the residents would head for a little turret-like building next to the lawn. They would enter through the door and go down ten steps to the main area. The shelter was split into night rooms and day rooms, and there were different sections for the men and the women. There were hooks and shelves for people's belongings, and a toilet at either end, one for women, and one for men. Well, it gave you a, a sense of a bit of safety for Absolutely. your family, if you follow what I mean. Mm. But, uh, of course, you can only use it for, us, for so many nights. Yeah. 
it's, it's not possible to stay down there night after night, night after night, and go to work. Because you can't sleep when you couldn't sleep while you were down there? No. You had to get some sleep. Yeah. What did people talk about when they were down there? Um, they didn't used to show any freightness or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. They just put on a brave sort of uh, appearance, I think. <laughs> and of course, we had that, um, that night when uh, they didn't drop bombs, they dropped the um, incendiaries. incendiaries. And one dropped in the roof just in the corner up there in that block of flats. In this block of flats? Yes. Really? Yes. And what happened? Did it burn the, the porter place? put it out, I think. Who did? And the fireman. I wasn't on yeah. fire duty here that yeah. night. Yeah. But there, we all had to do fire duty, mm. if you follow what I mean. So I used to do one night, and other men here used to do, do their share as well. And there's forms for you all to sit down on. And on that side, there were bunks for whoever wanted to, to pay for it. It cost, you, uh, cost me seven pounds for a bunk for my, my own daughter. She'd be asleep in there while we'd be there chatting with all the neighbours who were down there, if you follow what I mean. Yeah. But as I said, it wasn't possible to do that night after night, night after night. So my wife and I <coughs> decided that our hall out there was wide enough to take a double mattress and a cot. And what there, we put the double mattress down, the pillows, blankets, and put the cot there. My little girl, we used to shut all the door. As you know, the windows used to be all uh, black tape over right. them, and they blacked out anyway, <coughs> with curtains. And we just went to sleep. And we just heard the bombs thudding into the ground, planes going over, and, um, and, and that, that was it. Used to get up and go to work in the morning. You remember the Leinster Avenue bomb going off? Yes, I do. You could hear it? Yes. Yeah. Those were uh, the flying bombs. Oh, the flying bombs. That was the flying bomb, yes. Yeah. Actually, in my bedroom, out of my window, the window used to be open because it used to be warm. You used to see them flying, the shadow of them, actually, flying over there. And when you heard them stop, the engine stopped, you knew that they were coming down. The V-1 was a bit like a jet aeroplane. It was launched from a ramp and flew at 500 miles an hour. Most of the V-1s got through, and when the engines cut out and they fell to earth, they caused enormous damage. But worse was to come in the shape of the V-2 rockets. These were over 40 feet in length and were fired from bases in Holland. They travelled faster than the speed of sound and carried huge amounts of explosive. The first V-2 rocket landed within earshot of Sheen, as Leslie recalls. The V-2, which you didn't hear come down, yeah. came down in Chiswick. And I believe the authorities said it was um, a gas main that went off. <laughs> That's what they said, actually. Yeah. But it was, that filled the fell, fell down in Chiswick. Yeah. You didn't hear it come down. No. You just heard the explosion. I think Churchill went to see that bomb Yes, he side. did, I believe, yes. Yeah. Fortunately, the Allies captured the rocket bases before they could do too much damage. And in June 1945, Churchill announced to the people that Germany had been defeated. The German war is therefore at an end. Today is victory in Europe day. Today, Ishin is once again an oasis of peace and the shelter is still there under the lawn. As for Leslie, he lived on to the ripe old age of 103 and duly received his letter of congratulations from the Queen. I am so pleased to know that you are celebrating 
your 100th birthday on the 6th of June, 2008. I send my congratulations and best wishes to you on such a special occasion, Elizabeth. Is that all right? That's beautiful, yeah. Okay. Were, were you expecting that card? Or no. Did, no. No. Do you get one every year when you're... No, I think um, it either comes when you're 105 or 110. I'm not sure. But you'll get your, you should be getting another one in a couple of well, years. So. <laughs> yes, I hope so. <laughs> I hope I'm still around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did your uh, daughter get woken up by, your baby daughter get woken up by Bob? And although there's a lot of glass around, uh, well, didn't think about everything, if you follow what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what I decided, mm. and that's what we did. Mm. And unfortunately, we were very lucky. Uh, the nearest bomb that fell here, I think, was Leinster Avenue, I think. I think a bomb was hit... The house on the corner but I'm not quite sure and of course we used to hear bombers thudding into obviously um, a lot has thudded into the river <coughs> because obviously <coughs> pardon me they wanted to get that bridge Chiswick Bridge Chiswick Bridge yeah I think you were saying that uh, the bombs made a particular noise you know there'd be a whine and then an explosion that's, that's right but it was different with the river can, can you right. tell me about the noise that bombs made not the normal bombs made and as opposed to the noise that bombs made that were going to fall in the river oh what, oh. what were the noises that normal bombs well, made just an explosion uh, did so you hear they... it coming down first uh no not really right no um i don't remember hearing them coming down yeah. I do remember hearing them coming down in the uh, <coughs> when I was in the shelter, but not when I was here. Yeah. <coughs> so uh, you remember the Leinster Avenue bomb going off? Yes, I do. You could hear it. Yes. Yeah. Those were uh, the flying bombs. Oh, the flying bombs. That was the flying bomb. Yes. Yeah. Actually, in my bedroom, out of my window, the window used to be open because it used to.